In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, the MoGraph multi shader. Works in a very similar way to the MoGraph color shader. Um, I'll probably recommend that you watch the tutorials on the color shader first if you're not familiar with it. Um, in this scene, we've got this uh, really simple playing card that I've made. And I'm going to just double click to create a new material and drag that on for now. And in this material, let's come to the texture slot and choose MoGraph and add in the multi shader. If we open the multi shader up, you can see that it actually has these texture slots and by default there are two in there. Let's just click add to add one more. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose to add in a color shader here and we can drag that down and drop that onto each one. So at the moment we've got all of these shaders are white. So let's open up each one and just make them all different colors. It doesn't really matter. Now the way that this works is very similar to how the MoGraph color shader works in that it looks at the input, which by default is the uh, color brightness. Um, so it looks at the, the, the brightness of the object and then it picks uh, something, one of these shaders. And these can be any shader that you find in your shader list or of course it can also be images that you've loaded in. And it could be something like a layer shader with a very complicated setup in here. Um, I've just chosen three colors just to make it nice and simple. And if we select our playing card and we come to the basic tab, and we do as we did before, we set this to automatic, you can see that now as I change the, um, the luminance or the brightness of this object, it then picks between those shaders that we've created. Um, whoops, let's just go back to that. So you can see that when it's uh, you know black, it picks from the red one, and when it's white, it picks the green one, um, and then the grayscale values in between, it will pick any shaders in between. So pretty simple. And there are a few other options in here as well. You can choose the index ratio. So if it's in a cloner, it will look at the number of clone. You can choose um, from RGB. And then you've also got these average color options, which allow you to um, kind of create those pictures from pictures. Um, but that's something for another tutorial. OK, so that's basically how the multi shader works. So what I want to do is I want to show you a little trick that you can do with it. So what I want to do is show you how you can make a whole pack of playing cards um, just with one material and one object. So I'm going to take this card back and in the color channel, I'm going to load in um, a, a, a texture. So you can click on this little ellipsis button. You then need to navigate to the textures and these are included with the download. But the important thing here is that you need to make sure that your texture folder is in the same directory as the scene file. Um, you need these to be relative to the scene file. If they're not there, you need to set a texture path in your preference pointing at the location of these. Um, I'm going to just select the playing card back and click open. OK, and if it comes up with a warning that says to you it is not in the location, do you want to copy it there? You need to cancel and you need to go back and you need to make sure that wherever you've saved this scene file, these textures are in the same location in a text folder. So now we have the playing card back as a JPEG on here. We can grab this and we can just drop this onto our playing card. Now by default, it's going to use the UVW mapping and you can see that we get this weird stretchy result and it's on both sides. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to set this to be flat. OK, and you can see that it doesn't fit correctly. Um, so the easiest way to make that fit is just to literally right click on the tag and choose fit to object. It's going to say, do you want to include any sub objects here? And we can just say yes. And there we go. Um, and if we look, it's on both sides. So what I want to do is I just want to click on here and I want to set this so that um, this is on the back of my objects. So we can choose with that tag selected under the tag tab where it says side, we can choose back. OK, now when we rotate around, you can see we only see it on one side, but don't rely on what you see in the editor. If we render that, you can see it looks white. If we turn it around here, you can see it looks white it's not actually working if we set the projection to be UVW and render there you go you can see it works and it's not working on that side so this side option is only working with UVW mapping but there is a way to get around that so let's set that back to flat what you can do is you can use a stick texture tag um, and if we just right click on our uh, select our playing card choose tags cinema 4d tags and add a stick texture tag and just hit record now render, you can see it's white on this side and we have our playing card on that side. 
So if you need to show um, the material only on one side of your polygon, then that's the little trick to use. Use the stick texture tag. And when it says the back and the front, what it's essentially referring to is the back or the front of the polygon. Okay, so if you have any thickness on here, the, the, the back of it would be inside the object. It's to do with the polygon normals and which direction that's facing. So now comes the fun part, um, and what we can do now, I'm just going to select this playing card, and under the basic use color, I'm just going to set that to off for now, so we're just back with our default kind of gray-blue color. Um, select the card material, then we are going to load in the MoGraph multi-shader. Click and open up the multi-shader, and you can see we've got this option, Add from Folder. So I'm going to click that. This has come back to my uh, text folder and in here I've got a folder called cards. If we open that up, you can see in here we've got all of the cards from a deck of cards. Let's just go back. What we want to do is just select that card and then click open. And that's a nice handy way of loading 52 images in one click. And you can see there we go. And they've all been ordered based on the name. So it starts on the 10 of clubs, which is a bit annoying. It'd be nice if it started on the... Um, the two um, but obviously it looks at the number one um, so now we can just drag this onto our object but that's going to be wrong so probably what we want to do is just delete that let's just grab this tag and control drag to create a duplicate let's drag our card material and drop it onto that tag and let's set the side here to be front okay Um, obviously, it's the wrong way round, so let's come to our coordinates and let's just set the heading here to be 180. There we go. So now we've got the back of the card like so and the front of the card like so. I'm just going to select these two and under the basic tab, switch off reflectance just so we get rid of that specular so we can see nice and clear. And now you can see it's showing number 10 because, of course, in our shader, it's the first one. If we select our playing card, and choose automatic for our use color, make it white. We can scrub through all of these colors here and we can see all of the different images from the multi shader. So, again, it's taking this grayscale value, it's looking at that value, and based on the value, it's picking one of these shaders. So, you can use this if you're creating all sorts of things. Maybe you wanted to create some dominoes. Or perhaps you wanted to create um, one of those montages with thousands of images, you know, where all the photos come together. So you can load all your photographs and everything in here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this playing card, we're going to take 52 of them, and we're going to make sure that we have 52 unique cards. In other words, we don't want any duplicate cards. We want a proper deck of cards. With your playing card selected, hold down the Alt key, and let's come into the MoGraph menu, add a clone or object. Select that cloner and under the object tab, let's set the mode to be radial. I'm going to set a count of 52 um, and let's give that a radius of say 50 with a start angle of say uh, minus 60 and an end angle of 60. And if we just press H, that will frame that. And you can see at the moment they're all overlapping, which is not very attractive so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, switch to the transform tab and just give them a little bit of heading say maybe one or something like so okay and there you go and now you can see that we have lots of queens we could of course come to our card material and in that multi shader we could set the mode here to be index ratio and there you go and now you can see it's starting here this must be the first one it's going all the way around to the very last one here. So we have all of our cards showing up um, coming from this shader. I'm going to set that back to the color brightness. We can select our cloner. We can, under the transform tab, we can adjust the brightness here. You can see that then cycles through all of those shaders as well. If we select the cloner, come up to the MoGraph menu and choose Effector and add in a Step Effector. I'm going to set the scale to be disabled and right click on here and choose linear spline. And um, what we want to do is set the color mode to be on. And again, we have all of our cards showing up in order. 
Now, this is all great stuff. Um, you know, we've created this deck of cards with one material and one card object, but currently they're all in order. You know, obviously, this isn't going to cut it in Vegas. We really need to shuffle these cards. Um, so instead of using the step effector, let's get rid of this, select our cloner. Let's come to the MoGraph menu. This time, let's use a random effector, and we're going to randomize the color. So we can switch off the position and enable the color mode. Now the problem is that although it's randomized it, if we come in close and have a look, um, um, and as we just kind of come through, there we go, you can see we've got two Queen of Hearts, um, so that's not a very good start. Um, we've got two more Queen of Hearts, so you know, uh, you can see that although we've randomized them, you know, we've got two Three of Hearts there, um, two Five of Clubs. So that's not really the result that we're after as well, but luckily for us, the random effector has a really nice feature designed specifically for this kind of setup. If we switch to the um, effector tab, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that the minimum and maximum are set to 0 and 100. So we need to bring our minimum and we just set that to 0. So we know that the random value is going to be between 0 and 100. The next thing that we need to do is we need to come down to this random mode. Um, and if we have a look in the list here, we have one at the very bottom which is called sorted. Now the sorted mode is designed specifically for this task. If we enable the sorted mode, then what will happen is it will make sure that every single clone is a unique color and there are no duplicates. And what that means is it will then take a unique card from our multi-shader. So by using the random sorted mode means that if we've got 52 images and we have 52 clones, every single clone is going to have a unique image and they're going to be randomized. And if we come in and have a look close and we can go through um, and I mean, if you've got a good memory, you can see if this is, if there are any duplicates, but I can pretty much guarantee that it's working as expected and we don't actually have any duplicate cards at all. And as I say, you can use this kind of thing on anything that requires, uh, you know, lots and lots of images or shaders, and you don't actually want to duplicate any of them. You know, if you've got hundreds of images making a montage, you don't really want two images to be the same because we're going to spot that. We want everything to be unique. So it's a really cool trick. Now, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you in relation to doing this, and that is how you can actually, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not happy with it, you can shuffle them around. And if you want to make certain cards be you know, a specific number or face, then you can do that as well. So if you want to change them, obviously the easiest way to do that is just to come down here and to just change the seed value. And that's going to just change the random seed and it's going to shuffle them all around. Okay, so the other thing that we might want to do is we might want to say, okay, I want to pick one of these cards and I want it to be the ace of spades. So I might come in here and I might say, well, actually, this is where I'm going to end my shot and I want this two here to be sticking out and I want that to be the ace of spades. That's really easy to achieve as well. So all you need to do is you need to come to the cloner object and the first thing we need to do is we just need to make a MoGraph selection. The MoGraph selection allows you to select certain clones and then save that selection and then when we apply an effector, it will only affect the clones that are within that selection. So we come to the MoGraph selection tool. By default, it's this brush. And I'm going to select this two. So I know that this dot here is going to be the two. Although it looks like it's the 10, it's in the middle of the object. So that's going to be this one here. You can see that it goes yellow and it adds this tag. If we have the cloner and that tag selected, when we come up and we choose effector and we add in an effector, it's going to automatically add that MoGraph selection to our effector. So let's choose effector and let's just add in a plain effector. Boom, and you can see that it's affected only the two. It's added into this selection so slot, sorry, our MoGraph selection. Come back to our parameter. Let's just set that to say five, just so that's sticking out. So now we've just moved the number two. If we want to make this a certain face, and I want to make it the Ace of Spades, we can come to our color mode here, and we can set this to be user-defined, okay, and by default it's white. So now we've got a Queen of Spades, <laughs> and just so happens there's another one here. But what we can do is we can grab this, and we can just go through, 
and we're basically changing the color that color is then being read by that multi shader and it's going to pick the image that we want and as we come back through we should find there's our ace so we found the ace of spades so now we've set that to be an ace of spades and that's exactly the result we want the only thing we're doing this of course is that we're going to have another ace of spades in our pack somewhere um, if we just have a look um, and there it is here so what you probably want to do is to uh, come here um, and create another MoGraph selection let's just select this and we'll call this um, tag something different let's call it MoGraph selection one uh, you might want to use a bit more of a descriptive name um, and now we can come and we choose MoGraph effector plane effector okay we can switch off position we can enable our color mode and then we're just going to drag this through until we find I think it was the two of spades that was there before so now we know that they're all unique so not only can you can create a whole deck of cards just by using one material and by using one object you can make sure that they're all unique and you can even get down to the finest detail where you can control any specific card to um, be any particular image so it does allow a, an amazing amount of control.